This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Welcome to all of you. We're thrilled to have you all here. We have a, a very um, uh, exciting, and I think you'll find it a productive day. So um, I'm glad you could make time to be with us. I'm Susan Carlson. I'm the Vice Provost of Academic Personnel at Office of the President and the PI on our system-wide advanced project. This is the fourth meeting the California Challenge Roundtable for the UC Advanced Paid Program. Our title is, as you see up here, the Role of Contributions to Diversity in Faculty Hiring and Academic Review. The program goal is to assist UC campuses in increasing the representation of women and underrepresented minorities on UC STEM faculties. And of course, that's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Research shows that diverse teams produce more innovative science and provide more effective education for our students. The program takes advantage of our singular 10 campus system to develop data sets that identify issues and solutions and to partner on innovations and interventions. Today we have you, over 120 faculty, students, administrators, and staff from all 10 campuses. Today's issue is foundational as it focuses on how we hire faculty and how we review them for merits and advancements. UC has a decades-long commitment to building a diverse community, and in 2006 added language to the Academic Personnel Manual specifying how that commitment might be acknowledged in appointment and promotion. The APM says, in particular, the University of California is committed to excellence and equity in every facet of its mission, teaching, research, Professional and public service contributions that promote diversity and equal opportunity are to be encouraged and given recognition in the evaluation of the candidate's contributions. And you received a summary of this policy in your electronic packet. We have three goals for the day. First, to discuss the relationship of academic excellence and contributions to diversity in STEM disciplines. Second, to develop well-grounded measures in evaluating and rewarding contributions to diversity. And third, to, get great, to gain excuse me, a greater understanding of faculty roles in research, teaching, and service in building the pipeline of underrepresented minorities and women in STEM. You all received an, an electronic packet earlier this week. It contains a sampler of data and research that provide a context for our meeting today and points to a principle of our project. It is research-driven and data-based. The data includes materials that demonstrate that we can and do compile information to help us understand the current diversity of the faculty, as well as data on how our hiring and review processes can be studied for their successes and their failures in diversifying the faculty. So I would ask you to think for a moment about the opportunities you will have when you leave today to use the information and conversations of this roundtable. You are decision makers in faculty appointment and review. In fact, you are constant decision makers, and that's what these numbers are about. Um, for example, the, the uh, academics at UC each year review somewhere in the neighborhood of 40,000 applications for latter rank faculty positions. You have made over 2,000 hires of ladder rank faculty in the last five years. And in the last year alone, you have processed 7,000 review actions for faculty in all professorial titles. In other words, you can apply what you learned today about best practices in appointment and review immediately. And some of you have already led the way with best practices. I recently came across this ad that you see featured up here for a ladder rank faculty position in UC San Diego's Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. 
The ad notes that, I know you can't read this, um, the ad notes that preferred candidates will have the potential for leadership in areas contributing to diversity, equity, and inclusion, and will have a desire to play a future role in helping to shape and expand the university's diversity initiatives. Ours is a research-based conversation. You have two brochures in your electronic packet from the University of Wisconsin Advanced Program. Both demonstrate how research informs our practice in diversifying the faculty. So let me add two more recent publications for your consideration, and really just to stress that these are issues that can and should be studied. First, a 2012 article in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science uh, by Peterson, Riccoboni, Stanley, and Pomoli who assess the career options of 100 assistant professors in physics, a field which, as they characterize it, uh, a field in which collaboration is a key factor in success. They note that early career faculty face risks since the products of collaboration take time to manifest. And they conclude, I, I think somewhat depressingly, that scientific achievement is becoming increasingly linked to online visibility in a considerable reputation tournament. And a second argument really talks about this tournament as well. Um, it's a 2013 article in International Organization entitled The Gender Citation Gap in International Relations. It has implications for our conversations today as well. Uh, conversations today as well. Authors Maliniak, Powers, and Walter, Walter who's here at UC San Diego, perform an exhaustive study on citation counts in their discipline and find that there are clear gender differences in these citation patterns, concluding that citation counts are not a fair and objective measure of the quality and impact of a scholar. I, I really encourage you to read this article. So our speakers today will address these issues and more in a moment. But before we turn to them, let me thank those who made today possible. First, the planning committee included from UC San Diego, Jean Ferrante, Jeff Remmel, Emily Roxworthy, Kit Poliano, and Christy Larson. And from uh, system-wide, we had helping us Mark Golden, Linda Peterson, Matt Xavier, and Nancy Tanaka. We had the help of other staff here at UC San Diego, and many of them are in the room today, um, including several from the Office of the Chance Chancellor, so I'd like in particular to mention Judy Lane and Adrian McCraw. And also my staff at the Office of the President has put many, many hours into today's event. Um, in addition to those named above, I would call out Jennifer Lipscomb, Sharon Thomas, Joe Augustin, Amy Lee, Gina Duran, Carolyn Minnie, Janet Lockwood, and Julia Flinker. So please get them all a round of applause. And so we have a second welcome, and I would like to introduce to you Chancellor Linda Katehi. Um, as you know, she's the chancellor at UC Davis, and as you may not know, she is the chair of the steering committee for this project. She is a champion of building intellectual excellence by building diverse teams and rewarding a full range of their accomplishments. So, Linda. Susan, thank you so much, and good morning to everyone. Um, it is a great pleasure to be part of this event, and I'm honored to be the chair of the UC Advanced Paid Steering Committee, and to have had the opportunity to participate in the early days of that program um, when we were trying to define what the goal should be, and uh, then eventually with um, Susan's leadership to launch it into something as big and impactful as this one. Today we have a very important task ahead of us, um, trying to understand, of course, the role of diversity. We all in this, um, in this room, I believe we are um, really uh, not just uh, believing in it, but advocates of it. And uh, the, the challenge today will be to take it one step further and trying to see how really our processes will help us diversify to the degree we feel that diversity really reflects the excellence um, that we would like to see in the UC. What I would like to do today is just to um, bring a different point of view that um, I, I have seen in, in a different role that I have 
and, and speak about that as well. And of course, the role of diversity in this. A lot of times we speak about diversity as uh, an opportunity to underrepresented groups, which is true, as um, justice to these groups, which is true. But most of the time, we forget to mention that the reason for diversity is an economic one which is far more important, of course, for our society because it's not going to only benefit those groups that need to be recognized, that need to be given the opportunity, but will benefit everybody else. I have been asked to be a member of the National Academy of Engineering Committee on uh, Making Value for America. And this committee really speaks about the, um, well, the history, where we were and where we've been in terms of um, creating value in our country, and what the competitors are at this point, and what that really means in terms of the future for our country and our economy, and what are the opportunities for us looking forward, or the challenges. And of course, when you start talking about what opportunities we have in making value for America, the one thing that comes immediately in front of us is the role of the workforce. We cannot make value in the US, in this economy we live, without having the appropriate workforce. And the primary component of that workforce comes from the STEM fields. So then you make that statement, and then you look at what other countries are doing. And I will just give you some numbers. In uh, China, 22% of the baccalaureate degrees are in engineering. In Europe, 12% of the baccalaureate degrees are in engineering. In the US, 6%. And now, OK, you have to translate the percentages into numbers, and you face a different reality, all right? You go to China, and that is a huge thing. But beyond that, what you also realize that in our country, the 6% applies only to a little less than half of the population. Because half of the population, meaning women, and also underrepresented minorities are not represented well in these fields. So the numbers are so small, unacceptably small for our country to really have an opportunity itself to play in the evolving field and to, to, to uh, sustain the economy and to improve our economy so we have a future, really, and our children live a life of the same quality like ours. And this is the fundamental reason we want to expand the opportunities and get the full population to be given an opportunity to participate in STEM fields. And of course, in the process, we will accomplish all of the other things. The diversity brings more innovation, that it brings better environments for work, that it creates all of these other opportunities that we really need to have. So with that, I uh, would like to start today. But also, I would like to remind us one more thing. We are not here to just uh, fix problems. Because we can do this on our own, on our own campuses. All right? We are good in fixing problems. You find one problem here, and then you fix it, another problem there. And I can bet you anything that every one of our campuses has a slightly different set of issues. Because we all are members of the UC, but we do have var var variations in our processes, policies, and practices. What I believe we are here to do is to innovate in this area. We UC is the number one in the world. And we need to come up to that level and act forward. So we are going to miss a tremendous opportunity if we live today trying to take incremental steps. And I'm not against incremental actions, because we take a lot of them every day and because they are needed. But here, as a UC, we have an opportunity to innovate in this area and do things that others will follow. And innovating means that we need to think out of the box. We need to challenge every process every thought, every principle, and every hypothesis that we've made in this particular area. And we should not feel that anything is out of reach when it comes to questioning. And we should never say that we cannot change that. 
is up to us to change everything if we want to. So that is another reminder. And the last thing that I wanted to um, make a comment on is the following. I have read, especially this past year, a lot of um, case books that have come to me and um, the process that we have on our campus is that I don't necessarily see all the positive cases, which now I'm going to change my mind. I would like to see the top cases and then, of course, see all the problematic ones because by seeing all the problematic ones, you are left with some kind of a feeling that is not necessarily very good. But um, I have to tell you, out of the problematic cases that I've read this year, I saw arguments written in ways that I believe are, could be cases in those publications that we see about bias. And it was very sad to see this written out of faculty that I know are truly care, truly care about diversity. Because I know the individuals. But when, at the end of the day, you have to take an action, our biases really come forward, and we do not know it. And so I think we need to really look very deeply in how we do things, how we make decisions. Training is absolutely critical. Understanding that we all suffer from the same biases because we all grew up in the same society. Men and women at the same level are biased and we do not know it. Or even if we know it, we don't know what to do about it. A lot of times I've caught myself thinking in ways that I would seriously challenge myself for that kind of thought. And I know that it's very difficult because we all try to defy something that we have acquired in a very young age about our own biases. Uh, and I'll give you an example. When I was a graduate student, I, I, well, let me go back. As an undergrad in um, the university was, was, uh, where I was back in Greece, I did not see one female faculty in engineering because there wasn't any in all of these five years, it was a five-year program, that I spent there. I could not see any, not one. Then I came to UCLA to go to graduate school. We did not have one single female faculty in engineering. The only one that I remember was Professor Cook. I remember her last name. And she was in applied mathematics. And finally, she left UCLA. She went somewhere in the East Coast. And I followed her. I mean, I did not have another faculty member. So when my advisor, I was uh, my last year of um, my PhD program, and I had no idea what I was going to do, as a matter of fact, because I, was, I did not know what I, I could do or what I wanted to do. My advisor asked me, do you want to become a faculty member? And I laughed at him. Really, I could not see myself being a faculty member. And, I, and, and he was very serious. In fact, it was him. He said, well, go to the University of Michigan. They're looking for one. And that was the only university I applied to. Because I just could not see. I was not even sure that I wanted to do it. Of course, I loved it. You know, when you are placed in a position and when you teach students and you're given uh, the opportunities to do research and all of the things that I loved, you know, that was for me. But I. On my own, I would never have produced this idea that that was a possible um, future, professionally speaking, for me. So in any case, we have a tremendous opportunity. We all know those stories, all right? One way or another, we all have lived them or have observed them or we have heard about them. But I think now we have an opportunity to change those stories for the others who are to come forward. We need to change the stories for our students we need to change the stories for our faculty. And we have the ability to do it that, to doing that. We can do this today, and we can do this tomorrow. So that's what I would like to leave you with. And before I go, I would like to thank all of my colleagues. We were so many in the plane. So I was thinking that Southwest owe us a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all for being here. Thanks.
Okay, and a final very quick um, welcome from Associate Vice Chancellor for Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion here at UC San Diego, Jean Ferrante, also Associate Dean in the Jacobs School of Engineering, also Professor of Computer Science and Engineering. Jean. Well, I'm sure you're now feeling very well welcomed. I've just been asked to um, uh, give you a few housekeeping details. Uh, we really want to make today as interactive as possible. Um, as you'll see this morning, we're going to be having a session with clickers. Um, but when we um, are able to um, have interaction with the audience, we'd like to point out to you that we have microphones, and we'd like people to uh, uh, line up at microphones when they have a question so we can, in fact, record them. So without further ado, let's get on with the day. <laughs> 